going on everybody? It's your boy B, Matt Wilson, rocking it live on the Pearl Session, WDBX 91.1. And I'm feeling good, fellas. How y'all feeling? Pretty good, pretty good. Awesome, bro. <laughs> I like that. I'm loving that intro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a little practice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask for my picture now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is your so, Carbondale Community Radio. So, uh, so what you been up to, man? Tell us how you've uh, been feeling and, and, and just what you've been working on. <laughs> Man, you know, I've been trying to work on a lot. Um, you asked me about some music, so definitely want to shout that out. Have some new music in store. Um, some Neo Soul is getting ready to come out. You know, a different little vibe, and I wanted to bring that out, so make sure you pay attention to that coming soon. He was telling us a little bit about that Neo Soul music, and um, I was just wanting to ask, like, what, what exactly is Neo Soul for the people who don't know? So let me give you some artists, a uh, couple artists to think about. So when I hear Neo Soul, I think of smooth, really relaxing R&B. You know, R&B can tend to sound poppy, but this is, um, you know, just smooth, cool vibes. Okay. So I think of the internet. Um, I you think to of, the internet? Yes, definitely listen to the internet. Okay. I, um, I you... think of Erica Badu. Okay. Definitely got to include her. Mm -hmm. um, music Soul Child. You know, I could go on for days, but when you listen to those artists right. and you just get that vibe, that's exactly what I'm going for. Her, it's a genre of music that people don't really do anymore. Yes, I feel like it's a genre that um, is going underway. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to bring that back and let us know that it's apparent. It's live and it's time to be heard. That's what's up. That's what's up. What is uh, the song called? I actually haven't named it yet. I'm, I'm still in the process of writing it. So uh, once I get that complete, the name will be coming soon. But um, but yeah, it's it's gonna go off of feelings and emotion. Mm -hmm. So the name, the title will have something to do with that okay. as well. Uh, just to get a gauge on it, how much of the song, how, how, how soon do you think the song is gonna come out? <clears throat> how soon do I think the song is gonna come out? Because I've, I've been waiting for a long time, you know. I, pre I appreciate you, bro. Um, I would say, within the next month, it'll come out. Um, okay. I'm, I'm having, finishing up writing it, having a little writer's block, you know, so you have to set the pen down sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's time to pick it back up and come back to it. So this is my goal, my promise to myself, right. along with you all, that the song will drop within the next month. What gets you into your writing mode? What gets me into my or writing mode? creative mode, mode in general, you know? Um, again, I feel like I was born in the wrong generation when it comes to music. So, um, Listening to older music mm -hmm. um, definitely gets me going, gets my creative juices flowing. So I listen to a lot of Luther Vandross, um, a lot of Whitney, uh, people that really sing with power, with soul. Mm -hmm. um, bringing it up to 90s music, I listen to a lot of Joe. Um, mm -hmm. My fraternity can tell you that I, I stay listening to a lot of throwbacks. So that, mm -hmm. that's what really gets me going to channel that and uh, you know, modernize right. and play something new. I see you got your boy in the corner over there talking about your fraternity. Yes, I'm in a professional business fraternity right now. Shout out to Alpha Kappa Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha the Kappa Epsilon Psi, Kappa okay. chapter. And um, yes, I have my boy Jalil Muhammad with me. He is a graphic design major, will be graduating this May 2020. So shout out to that. Um, he is also a photographer at JCPenney, so if you need some photography, you know, come through. He will definitely get you right. But he does many graphic designs. He has his own clothing design. Jalil can do it all. So that's okay, who I go Jack to for a lot. So shout out to him. Definitely had to bring him through. It's a good thing. That's a jack of all trades. And it's a good, good thing to put your brothers on at any time. When, you for know. sure. <laughs> that's my brother. He done been there with me through a lot. So, of course, I got to keep him along the way. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um... In recent news, I was hearing, I was seeing that you was getting a lot of backlash over the, the, the photo with the governor. <laughs> What's going on with that? Meeting Illinois Governor Presser. So, first and foremost, I just want to say that was a great opportunity because most people don't get to meet the mm -hmm. governor. Um, and so, with me working as a marketing consultant at the Southern Illinois, which I've been there for three months now. I really enjoy that. I uh, have a lot of opportunity to network with a lot of people, go to a lot of different business mixers of mm -hmm. sorts. And so that happened to be one of them. We at the Southern Illinois hosted a session. If you could ask the governor one question, what would it be? 
And so we had a lot of people come to that forum to speak their concerns to the governor and different things like that. Well, since I'm a marketing consultant, I have to work outside the office. Being a marketing consultant, all the advertisements that you see in the paper, we have to go to those businesses and make them clients for us. So that is what I do. And so as I was coming back into the office, their form had ended and he was leaving. So I called him in passing and I was like, hey, you know, Governor, I voted for you. Can I get a picture with you? And, you know, we chopped it up a little bit and that's how it went. So it was just really cool with that. Now, with me posting that on Facebook, <laughs> it definitely got some reaction. People were uh, posting their emotions and concerns. And I'm like, this is just a picture, you know. Write a letter if that's how you feel. But, you know, get <laughs> right, off my right, Facebook. Right. So, but it was cool. Let's dig cool. deep, though. How, how do you feel about the job that he's been doing? Um, well, this is what I'm going to say. He just got into office. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's too new for people to formulate an opinion. Right. You know, at the end of the day, he was voted because he has a plan. Mm -hmm. Now, we may agree or disagree, but let the man do what he said he was going to do. And then... Right. You know, have something to say. It's too soon to have a call to make a shot. You know what I'm saying? So let him do what he said he was going to do, and we'll go from there. Remember the days when talking about politics and religion was disrespectful? Right. Yes, I do. And now it seems like that's all that we talk about. You know, it was removing. Mm -hmm. It was removed from the workforce. It was removed from schools, from everywhere. But now you can't get enough of it. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So. Plenty of big chunks of that. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Obama that man, too, because you yeah, know, that Obama. that brought a lot of racists out to me. Right, honest. right. So but. we're not going to necessarily. I don't <laughs> want to say three. racist. I just want to say people show their true colors, right. wherever, whatever that may be. I mean, I mean, let's say since releasing my pants since Trump's been president, I've just seen a lot more political posts. So like, since Trump's been president, there's definitely like every week there's been like a presidential article or something the president's done. It wasn't like that before. You know what I'm saying? Every week is something new, break news he's doing, newsworthy. It's kind of interesting. That's a good uh, segue to your community service that you've been doing. All right. Let's, let's talk a little okay. bit about that. Um, well, yes, everyone knows I'm definitely big into community service. So whatever event there is, Matt Wilson will be there. The most recent event that I attended um, was Stop the Violence. And that was brought to you by Alex Spearman along with some of the members of Delta Phi Delta Dance Fraternity. And so I want to shout out to them for putting on that event. Um, there's been a lot going on in Carbondale, but we want to bring the community together and do so in a positive way uh, for children to, you know, find something to do instead of being on the streets. Just having fun, playing games, and, you know, bringing the fun out of adults too because mm -hmm. it's still, that inner kid is still in you. So I was glad that they were able to put that together. It was a great turnout. We danced, we ate good, you know, just a very good time. So unfortunately it rained, but that didn't stop our shine. You feel me? I appreciate it. It, it was definitely a good event. So anything uh, like that I would be, I like to go to different marches. I've participated in, in all of them throughout campus, um, put on many campus events during my undergrad year. So when it comes to community service, that's what I'm all about is serving the community. That's what's up. I would like to uh, add something on community service. Have you ever thought about getting into actual politics, you know, like being a councilman or anything like that? Because it sounds like you got a good articulate. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, to be honest, so my SIU friends joke and call me the mayor of Carbondale. <laughs> One day. No, we'll see. <laughs> hey, but hey, um, but I, actually have, I actually have considered joining city council. I do go to the city council meetings. Um, I have met with Councilwoman Harvey, shout out to her if she's listening, um, and different things like that because I do care, I do want to get involved. Carbonell is what made me, so um, you know why not, and I feel like it is our turn. We are the next generation that's coming up, so somebody has to step up and be that voice and be a difference. So you know, God has blessed me to be in these endeavors, why not be me? I got a question off the uh, media. Uh, they're uh, segueing, uh, segueing back to your music. And like, do you have any features that's coming up on the mixtape? Anybody you would like to shout out, or you, is it unfinished? Okay. Yeah. Again, the EP is unfinished. I said I was going to release it once I get to ten songs. Right now, I have seven songs complete, and I'm writing number eight, so I'm almost to my personal goal. Um, with this particular mixtape, I don't have any features. I kind of want to show the world 
who I am first. Um, a lot of people do want to do collabs and I'm definitely uh, down to work with people. I definitely do want to do that. But me personally, I feel like I'm not at my best. I can't give someone my all until I figure out who I am. And so with doing these 10 songs, I will be able to grasp all the different styles and genres that I possibly can. So when someone does want to work with me, they'll be like, yeah, you know, Matt Wilson, he got it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to make sure that I'm good on their level to match them. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. really I'm working on myself. So this EP that I'm going to release is going to be called Practice because it's my first 10 songs. No one can say it's my best work because it's simply practice, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. I'm learning, I'm growing. I'm open to all type of responses, you know, just to help me uh, become better as an artist. You know what I like? I like the consistency in that answer because I think last time when you came in, you actually said something along the exact same lines about the practice and mm -hmm. if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But it's just practice and learning and whatnot. I like that attitude. Thank you, bro. You know what I mean that you actually working. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, did we talk about your Primo's commercial yet? So, Primo's. Um, well, let's talk about that. So, here we are at the Pearl Session, you know, the dopest community radio session. Now, as a, for school at SIU, I was a radio, television, and digital media major with a minor in communication studies. And so, while at school, I was able to have the internships to work with um, 101.5 CILFM. And with working with them, being on the street team, um, I was able to go out and do live radio remotes, different things like that, and be featured on commercials, singing background vocals or doing voiceovers, different things like that. So one of the opportunities that I came across was singing for Primo's Pizza. Mm -hmm. Matt Linton, who does their commercials, was like, Matt, we have this commercial, but it's missing one thing. I'm like, what is it? He said, you. I'm like, you know, that's what's up. So I definitely want to be a part of that commercial. <laughs> So he came to me with the beat, he rapped on the lyrics, and asked me to uh, do some background vocals and sing the main hook of the commercial. So I was able to sing for Primo's Pizza. So I did that back in 2018. In 2019, their award ceremony came for, came for it, um, which is the Illinois Broadcast Association, IBA Awards. In other words, Radio Grammys. And so um, they submitted that commercial and we ended up winning first place for the medium market wow. radio. And um, yeah, ended up winning a Grammy yeah, off of that commercial. Guy, right? And that was so <laughs> random, unexpected, you know, but I just thank God for that opportunity and it has definitely continued to open doors. And so that's what I was going to say to the rest of my fellow artists out there or any creative people. You can get your voice heard in many ways. And so that's why I wanted to do commercials was because of course I'm trying to release my EP but if my music doesn't take off my voice can still be heard through commercials jingles yeah. uh, being cartoon narratives anything you have a voice use it it's something to fall back on yeah, yeah something, something to fall back on um, I got that. Um, you do a lot of endeavors what would you say is one of your biggest accomplishments what would I say uh, was one of my biggest accomplishments? That's a really good question. Um, you know, aside from all the awards that people see publicly, I'm just gonna simply say graduating from college because that was truly a struggle for me. Many people don't really know my story. And so, um, since you asked, I'm gonna share it with you. I graduated high school in 2009. And um, to be honest, I was scared to go to school. So I decided that I was going to go to John A. Logan Community College to get a feel of what college actually is and learn from that. Um, going through there, I went through a depression phase. I actually dropped out of school and thought, you know, it was too hard. It wasn't for me. I just was unsure of what I was going to do with my life. And so during that time, I just felt like I'm really bummy right now. I need to be doing more. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to go ahead and get back in and I said no matter how long it's it's going to take I'm going to finish no matter what so I finally graduated with my associate's degree and decided you know that's one step let me go to SIU I don't care how long it takes there I'm going to finish so I went to SIU in 2014 
ended up changing my major in 2016, which push, pushed me back two years. And so I wasn't able to graduate until 2018, but I'm thankful that I still stuck through it and I was still able to graduate. And so it took me all those years to receive my bachelor's degree, but it's not about how fast you get it done, just as long as you get it done. And if I was, and I just feel like God put me on the right path to do so. With me being in school for so long, I was able to network and uh, utilize the resources that I was there for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I was able to win Homecoming King of Carbondale Community High School, John A. Logan Community College, and Southern Illinois University, the first to win all three. And I wouldn't be able to do so if I was moving faster. God put me at my own pace, and so this is my own race. It's crazy because I was just about to ask you a question about networking, how important is that? But we ain't got to get to that no more. You were talking about uh, going through that depressing phase. It is uh, a good thing to see black men uh, uh, just be more vulnerable, you know, and talk mm -hmm. about those type of things. What are, uh, for people that's going through the same thing or have been through the same thing, what are five things that you would say uh, lifts your mood and keeps you out of that mindset? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, because again, like you said, everybody goes through their own depression phase. We don't want to talk about it, especially as black men, because we feel weak. But let's just be real. You know, we're all human. That is what we go through. So. Um, I don't know if I can give you to them in order, but I'm just going to say them as they come along. Um, one, believe in yourself. Uh, throughout my life growing up, I used to care what people thought, uh, what people say, how people treated me, and different things like that. And once I stopped caring, that's when the glow started to happen. Once you close those doors and don't give people energy of, well, Matt is this. We think Matt must be this way because he acts this way or, you know, whatever. Once you stop caring, you learn to love yourself. And so I pray to God, you know, help me love myself because I don't. And once I started to, that is when I just found the true inner me and have been blessed and blossoming ever since. Um, so I definitely want to just tell people to believe in yourself because that's all that you have Two, never give up no matter how long it takes never give up this is not no one is competing with anyone else you are only competing against yourself so once you one believe in yourself and tell yourself that you can do that don't give up and keep going until you do those are two things that I'm going to say. Let me come back to that and I'll come up okay. with, you know, the rest of my list. Those but. are two prepared answers, it sounded like, to be honest. Uh, I got you know, I'm both for Matt. <laughs> uh, of what you said, would you believe in uh, the law of attraction? Like you can uh, achieve whatever you set your mind to if you think about it well enough, uh, the world will put those things in front of you? I do believe that you can achieve anything that you want. Um, because we're all human beings, we're all equal, so what makes someone else more capable of doing something and I can't do it? You have to sit down and tell yourself that yes, I can. Yes, I'm here for a reason. And once you believe that and you continue to motivate yourself, it will happen. I have to be my own testimony because going to school or just uh, just doing anything trying to receive any type of accomplishment i'm like this is so hard this is so difficult but once i tell myself i got it i see so and so can do it so can i yes yeah. you can and you can so it's all mental i was just talking to my frat brother jaleel about that like everything is mental but once you conquer that you know that's that's your biggest step mm -hmm. you feel like that uh like like especially after like 2012 a lot of stuff is not too physical because everything all social media you got an right. app for everything and sometimes a lot of people overthink a lot of stuff so it's like if you take care of that mental mm -hmm. then that 20 percent physical that it usually works out and it, it's like it's mostly you it's not anybody else like if you can get your mind right and bat out all the negativity 
you can do it. So, right. and that's, you worked in a prime example right here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, shout out to Matt Wilson, man. You already know, appreciate y'all yeah. for allowing me to keep it real. We y'all, you know. <laughs> what are we about to do? Go to a, a little song break? Let me yeah, let me know yeah, what's yeah. rocking, what's hot right now. Yeah, he got, hey, man, we gotta yeah. let Matt run the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's the best host today. Yeah, he's the best host. All right. It's your boy D Matt Wilson. Shout out to the Pearl yeah. Session on WDBX 91.1. Before we went to the break, you were talking about something to do with the high school, and that made, made me think about this past weekend where you guys had the reunion, the high school reunion. How did that go? You set that up, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so shout out to the livest class that ever attended Carpendale Community High School, class of 09. <laughs> you know, I have to shout us out right quick. Um, but yeah, we had our 10 year reunion and it was crazy to think that we've really been out of high school for 10 years. And a lot has happened, a lot of us have grown, um, you know, different things like that. But I was definitely thankful to be a part of that committee that I threw it together. Uh, our class president was Yemi Akintoye. Um, so it was me, Christian BB, Thomas Jefferson, shout out to him. And my favorite, my best friend since third grade, Jasmine Woolley. I couldn't do anything without her. So we all, you know, sat up, had different meetings, and tried to put that together. And um, it was the best. We had a lot of people come down nice. and enjoy themselves. We met at Trey Sombres that Friday night. We had a barbecue at Evergreen Park. Mm -hmm. That night we had a banquet at um, Elks Lodge. Shout out, shout out to Josie Young for getting us Elks Lodge. And then we had a farewell at the high school because I wanted to bring it together mm -hmm. back at the high school, right, yeah, where so it all came together. But it was just so great to see everyone come back and, you know, just share, you know, what they've been doing with their lives, see their kids, see different pictures, um, and really, you know, come together because we all grew up together and it was meaningful. When we walked in Friday night, everybody was screaming, embracing each other with hugs. It was like a real family reunion. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. So... Shout out to my class, and I can't wait for the next reunion. Well, I'm glad it turned out well. Like I said, y'all getting old because you're 30 now. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding on to my 20s for dear life. But, uh, <laughs> my body is feeling it. I already got aches in my legs and knees and, and everything else, but it was definitely cool. That's and I hope that every class, you know, continues to have their reunions because they're very, you know, monumental for you all. So, You ready for some world news, Matt? Let's talk about it. Fill me in with something. What's going on? How do you feel about this aerial situation? Whoo! Let's talk about the aerial like situation. You said you a lot to say about that. I do. So I am very glad to see that Halle Bailey is going to be the next aerial for the live action movie. Um, I've been following Chloe and Halle for years, long before they even, mm -hmm. you know, blew up back on their YouTube days. So to see them grow and prosper to be the black queens that they are is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I am very glad to see that, you know, finally we are getting some roles um, in, in playing characters that we weren't offered uh, mm -hmm. the opportunity to play before. I think of back when uh, Brandy had the opportunity to play Rogerson Hammerstein, Cinderella. Right, and yeah. that was a colorblind cast. Mm -hmm. Brandy was a black princess. The prince was Asian. The mother was black. The father was mm -hmm. white. You know, nobody said anything to that because it was a colorblind cast. Right. No race meant anything. So the fact that this in 2019 is getting uproar really says something about um, the time that we live in. Has anything really More changed? Bold these days. You know? <laughs> yes, we, people are very bold these days. Mm -hmm. They'll say it on social media, but not to no one's face. But we're not even gonna dive into that. Um, <laughs> so, but that came out in 1996, and I, I'm pretty sure she had, you know, people had something to say. But then in 2010, we finally got our first black princess with Princess and the Frog. Mm -hmm. Now we've had these, you know, fairy tales for years. Mm -hmm. But finally in 2010, we get our first black princess. And so when we get Princess Tiana, they promote her, but they remove Princess Jasmine. How do you put one colored princess out there and take away another? Wait, you know what, what I'm you saying? Mean they remove Princess Jasmine. 
when they were doing the sets and talking about all the princesses, uh -huh. you know, that kids can look at, uh -huh. they would promote Tiana and, uh, and replace oh, wow. her with Jasmine. So you thought uh -huh. you were slick by replacing one color with another color. That's not okay. Uh -huh. Now, 10 years later, we're having Ariel being cast as a black and we're still having uproar. Will this ever end? No, right. you know what I'm saying? But it's good to see that our talents are finally being seen for what they are. We are being seen for who we are. We are the magical people that God created us to be and mm -hmm. it's time, you know, to be seen with that. You know, I'm coming with the crazy opinions. I actually think like, why can't we have a new black princess? Right. Or a new black character? I, I feel like some of these Disney cartoons, because I heard Woody came out, as, and in the new Toy Story, mm -hmm. Woody is bisexual on that. Like, he was never bisexual <laughs> before. Spoiler alert, because I definitely, <laughs> definitely I, I did not know yet. that. I haven't seen it yet, but like, he was never bisexual before, so why make him that now? And the same with like Ariel, she was never black before. Why not make her that now? Why can't we have a, a brand new character and make her the star? You feel mm -hmm. me? The, the, the whole, whatever, a whole new movie or something, you know? That, that's the route I'm going. Like the gods of Egypt thing, you know, we're like don't play. Egyptians was never white. What are you talking about? Why would you? Why would you do that? <laughs> right. So. Everybody was someone of color with that. You know, that's a whole, whole different thing that we can dive in. But this is just America and the world that we live in. I do agree that we do need uh, more black characters, of all. But I think when it came to the live action. Um, just of who auditioned Halle Bailey won. You know, just her voice, her charisma, her character is what got her that role. I don't necessarily want to say they just um, gave it to her because she was black or just wanted to do something different, but she outshined whoever competed against her with that audition, and so that's why she won. So yes, I am happy to know that no matter um, the race, we can still do we can still do it you know what I'm saying I'm losing my choice of words here um, but again I would want to see more black characters because we're here we've been here forever we're not going anywhere so why not have more for us to offer then I feel like it'll be more fresh because it's, it, they, they grew up in that culture usually when you look at like comics and whatnot they they take on like with the Black Panther they take on that African mm -hmm. vibe you feel me I don't I don't know if the the Black Ariel thing is gonna be like that I think they just gonna take on the Little Mermaid vibe or whatever that was I kind of forget the movie to be honest <laughs> the original she, was she was a fish that had a um, a beautiful voice and she mm -hmm. wanted to she met I think she met a boy on land and she wanted yeah, to be with yeah, him yeah. but in order for her to have lungs to breathe, she would have to lose her voice. Mm -hmm. And that's where Ursula, the queen witch, that octopus, stole her voice. Mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't able to talk with this beautiful that Ariel that she person. was. And so, it's been years, but, yeah, um, been but we're bringing time. it back up because it's coming back out. Right. So, um, anyway, I'm just anx anxious to see the story, mm -hmm. learn about it, watch, watch it all over again, and you know, you fall in love with Ariel again, basically. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed I like seeing is like a lot of the rap designers who have been like blackifying stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like they'll take like like the Ralph out the window, they made him a black guy. Or uh, when those uh, Juneteenth, there was like uh, Google didn't have a, a yes. image for Juneteenth. Like those mm -hmm. people, they went and made that stuff and they got careers off of it. Mm -hmm. and it was cool seeing that. Very cool. And I want more of that. Uh, to continue. We have so many dope artists, um, so many dope creative people, whether it is um, hand drawing, singing, whatever. But just the fact that we are being recognized is just really cool. We have a voice, so it's time to be heard. Thank you. Especially with, with Ariel, they've been bringing out all the memes. Like, if Ariel made you mad, wait till you see, they bring out, like, Yes. Right. Well, that was <laughs> Ashley Shermaine. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you need to right now. Um, she is dope. One of the coldest uh, cartoon artists that I know. She probably does more. I just know her off of social media. Mm -hmm. But she's been drawing black themed cartoons since the beginning and I've been following her for years now. So just to see that her um, 
drawings are going viral and people are sharing her work because this is her theme it's great that she's finally getting seen and hopefully you know she may get a career be able to draw a cartoon off of that so we'll see who knows who knows we got this quick little game called, uh, actually two games we got uh, that we got going with all of our guests called uh, Cap No Cup and Versus. Cap No Cup, you know, Cap, that means uh, over-exaggerating, uh, No Cap, True. Um, so we just going to start off with that one. Uh, I'm going to shoot you the first one. I'll say uh, for Cap No Cap, Running for Office. For me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> it depends on the position, so no cap. No cap. Okay. 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 No. I don't. Wait. Let me. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Think. Yeah. yeah. Let me no, dive into that. that. Um, because that. not that I want to be the next Martin Luther King. That'd be great. But um, <laughs> there's just a lot that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just have to pray that God gives me the strength to get through some of that. Because if people talk about you now. Oh yeah, they just only imagine. Oh man. yeah, <laughs> and, and many more threats. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that that takes a lot of courage to to do. Um, so, but I wouldn't. But I do want to be involved. I do want to help my community. So you just have to buckle up and do it. Mm -hmm. So no cap. Okay. Vote Matt Wilson. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All okay. uh, number two, nineties R and B. No cap, not at all. That's the truth. That's what I grew up on. You know I'm gonna say that. <laughs> that was good. That's I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Uh, but it's in verses, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump to verses real quick. Uh, I was gonna say uh, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar. 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 Kendrick me personally, they have all encompassed That's me. Ass, you know what I'm so saying? What I like. Uh, still, I'm going to just be smart and say no cap to it all. How about that? Because <laughs> I want it all. Uh, no cap to it all. Uh, let's see. Uh, and versus, I got Black alumni versus Asian alumni. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Black alumni versus Asian alumni. Uh, Black alumni versus Asian alumni. Hey, you ain't even there. Right. Who wasn't there? Oh, yeah. I, right, who wasn't there? I was there for the original players' balls. Well, I'm not. I can't even say original because that's you know our parents' age. But before it died down, yes, I was there. So since unfortunately that it's fallen off and it won't get back to where it was, shout out to the Capitals though because you know they're they doing their thing. But you still got a ways away to grow. Um, in the most respectful way. I mean in the most respectful way. Um, I'm going to say black alumni because black alumni has been lit, will always be lit, and hasn't fall off. Hasn't fell off. They just unfortunately, you know, had some time. So now they're trying to regrow. So once they, you know, continue to grow, I'm definitely sure that they'll be back at it. Um, I'm going to add a little controversy. Quattro's uh, versus of course, I'm gonna say Primo. <laughs> you know they the my okay, word with the commercial. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. No, um, I I do like I do like Primos. I like their calzones. I like what Primos um has to offer. Quattro's is good, but they cool. But Primos is where it's at. I heard somebody give me a Italian village. Definitely like Italian village. I heard that one good too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, big shout out to me. She said he lying, bro. He said he lying. He lying. And he's not even here to say nothing. So I don't want to hear it. Well, my chose cheese tastes like Greco. El Greco, definitely. Sam, Sam hurts my stomach every time I eat it. I'm straight on the toilet. Sorry, Sam. You cool, but no. So we, I, I feel we gotta like, wrap up this show. So wait, so we do gotta wrap up this show. Look, I do wanna say, you know, thank everybody for tuning in to the Pearl oh, session man. today. It's been great. Um, so I guess based off the votes, what the people wanna hear is everything I need by, by Matt Wilson. So yeah. we'll segue into that and El not It is by far. I just had it, I just ordered a greasy cheesy. Make sure you go to El Greco and tell them Matt sent you. Right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. 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 Yeah.